Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and it's cast time once again, and um, and happy Memorial Day to everybody, and um, and then the music that I'm going to play here is um, uh, Orbita, uh, one hour generative ambient, a tribute to Bapako BCB module collection, but if I'm understanding this, if I'm understanding this correctly, and I listened to like about five or ten minutes of this, um, generative ambient basically is ambient music that's, um, it's completely unmanned, like it's, it's all done, uh, it's like the beats are pre-programmed, the instruments are pre-programmed, um, the, the melodies, the rhythm, um, even the, um, the, the rhythm changes, the instrument changes, the tempo changes, all the changes in this, they're all they're all pre-programmed, um, and even then, chances are there might be a uh, there might be a randomizer. There might be some randomizers thrown in here as well. But once again, I, if I understand this correctly, generative ambient is a uh, pre-planned and unmanned. Like there's no musician behind this type of stuff in. So, like I said, I listened to the first five ten minutes of it. It's actually some pretty interesting sound and stuff. Um, originally. I was gonna have um. I was gonna have a. I was gonna play domestic rust, uh, which is more hardcore punk. It was uh, it was confirmed to be uh, free to use, copyright free. Um, Orbita, what I'm about to play now, it had just shown up on my YouTube recommendations, so, clicked on it, listened to a little bit, bit of this, and like, hey, this is pretty cool stuff. So, I went with this. The problem with this was uh, up, um, downloaded it, as is obvious, then tried uploading it to YouTube to find out if it's uh, copyrighted or not. It was basically in production hell. It was uploaded. It got stuck in... Um, it was stuck in... Upload complete. Processing will take a few seconds. Well, it ended up taking like 5 or 10 minutes for it to start up. During that time, since the... Um, I had another one in my, uh, another album in my watch later, my watch later folder, for lack of a better word, um, smaller, I mean, smaller album, dungeon synth, so much less likely to be copyrighted, and a smaller file size, so kind of an emergency, uploaded this, but by the time it got uploaded and started processing, the results came back from Morbida saying it's free to use, so... So in other words, I could have gotten could have gotten started on this sooner, or I could have gotten started on this cast sooner, but it just I kind of got kind of got hijacked by this album. So. And I forgot to sound test this, so let me go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and crank it up to 75%. Because uh, one thing about this music, it is, it's ambient, so it's fairly quiet. Oh, that's part of the, uh, you, the thumbnail. Okay, upper left corner, it says, uh, it said file, edit, and all that. I'm like, I thought it was my computer. I thought maybe I had the window wrong or something. So. Uh, but otherwise, uh. One big, one big thing that happened, um, uh, right around 7 p.m., we had a big old thunder boomer going. I mean, just, and on top of that, there was also a tornado warning in the area. Um, it was like around, a tornado touched down about, I'd say about 10, 15 miles away from where I live. So, yeah, we had, we had the big warning and everything. Sky was pitch gray. Um, just the window outside my window, whoosh, it was practically uh, bending over at practically a 90 degree angle. I mean, the wind was going like crazy. It, you know, just everything you'd expect in a combination of a thunderstorm and a tornado. Um, all uh, maybe five minutes. Yeah, probably about five minutes. Huge scare. Um, ran downstairs in the lower part of the apartment complex because, you know, that that's where you're supposed to go. Hell, my even my cell phone. <laughs> 
I mean, it was sitting there vibrating off the hook, looking at it, and the tornado warning, and all that, so, I mean, hell, it even shows up on Google now. Like, if, uh, you know, you give them your, you know, when they know your location, where you live and stuff, you'll even get a, I even got a tornado warning on Google. Like, you know, when I had, I think I had just finished, um, posting up my blog and stuff, and I had just started, uh, working on putting together this cast video. Yeah, uh, I got to turn it, even, uh, Google was giving me a tornado warning, so. Never seen that before. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, um, like I've been doing the past few days, um, I'm doing this cast video in a different style. One that, uh, I'm not quite, I'm not quite competent enough with yet, so. Just don't be surprised if I make a few mistakes here and there. Um, I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea. Hold on. Um, but otherwise, for my daily pinball stream, it went good. Um, it's been like a two or three day trend now. Um, FX3, I think, um, I won a few tournaments. Um, and I think, um, I didn't place dead last in any, but I, I think I got some pretty low rankings in like one or two of them, but all the rest of them, they were all good, good solid performance. Like I said, this has been doing good so far. So, hoping to keep the trend up on uh, tomorrow's stream. Uh, Pinball Arcade, same thing. Just, um, been doing good on it. Um, haven't been breaking into the top five high scores or anything like that, but, you know, I'm still playing, you know, still playing for the most part, competently. So, I guess, um, uh, another way of looking at it that I've been making this comparison here from time to time I I, I I was good enough to where I lasted about three hours it was the three hour stream and I wasn't forced to play Zachariah so I think that uh, that accounts for something so and then um what um one of the viewers that came on his name was uh, a master smoker um, he seemed to be a, he seemed to be a pinball lover like myself. He has some pretty, has some pretty good convo, and, um, he's also, a he's also a VPX worshiper. But, unlike the, um, I think he's one of the few people that I can think of, possibly the only person that I can think of that is actually respectful towards me. Someone who doesn't have VPX, and someone who, who... I basically basically found out yesterday through him that I my computer can't really handle VPX. You know, mo most other most other viewers that are you know that are fan that use VPX, they often they often kind of look down on me, you know, because I don't have it. You know, but this you know, I think I had one person that probably. You know, probably said something like, "Hey, well, hey, if you got any problems with it, let me know," or something like that. But I mean, I mean, I think all of them did that. But also, a lot of those other people, you know, saying shit like, "Oh, I can't stand Pinball Arcade." Oh God, F FX3, I'm not a fan. I'm a BPX lover. You know, it's like, you know, and and, and I, and yeah, I've, I've I've said this in my uh, other cast, so sorry to be beating a dead horse because it's probably dog food by now but you know and I agree with them you know F BPX is freaking awesome I mean damn near every pe every pinball table imaginable is on here but again I I can only access maybe two of them you know and those two there the, t the tables have a sharp lean to the right you know the ball I'm not sure if that's the right phrase the tables lean to the right. I'll, I'll just go with that, but yeah, it just... So, the ball has this really strong roll to the right side of the table on those two. All the rest, I can't access because I don't have the ROMs for it. ROMs that really should be already, already be part of the game to begin with. So, but you know, again, 
you know, once again, going back to him, um, I wish I, if I'd have, if, I wish I'd have remembered to, probably back when I was working on my blog post, I wish I'd have, would have somehow documented the conversation and showed it. But yeah, I, I really liked what he said about it. He basically, he, he brought closure to my issue with it. It's, you basically, you practically, you practically have to have a whole brand new, brand spanking new computer that's totally devoted to making VPX work. Because I think he said something like, because there's a lot of hoops you have to jump through. There's a lot of computer settings that have to be set just right in order to make it run smoothly. So, which, which is basically going to be on my, uh, the capabilities of the computer I have now. So, I really do have to give props for him for that. Whereas, uh, most, most others, or hell, I, I recall what happened. I recall one, like, a few days ago. You know, one guy came out, I was playing pinball arcade, he was like, What is this? Oh, I'm playing Last Action Hero. No, silly, what software is this? Oh, pinball arcade. Nothing. So apparently he up and left. Like never seen or heard from again. So apparently it wasn't I wasn't playing on PPX, so pew, off he went. Bunch of fucking snobs. So but yeah, but like I said, Master Smoker, he stuck around. So I think he is one guy that I can well and truly say he's passionate about pinball. You know, where where's once again. I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, but most most other guys, oh, I love pinball, find out that I don't play PPX, and oh, God, and then off they go. So. Enough on that. Well, take it another drink. Oh, the glass of flashing. Yeah, and that's something else about this kind of music too. Um, one of my um, one of my other channels that I subscribe to called Cryo Chamber. They specialize in dark ambient music, but whether their music is copyrighted or free to use is like a 50/50 proposition. So, I I these days I steer clear of Cryo Chamber music. It's just too much of a gamble. So I'm really glad that uh, music like this is free to use. At least for now, anyway. I mean, those that have uh, checked out my other cast will know that uh, I had to delete a few videos because they were uh, copyright claimed. So, you know, they were free to use at the time. Uh, but anyway, I gotta, I gotta kind of move along. It's already been almost 15 minutes. Damn. So anyway, um, one show I tried watching, uh, it's actually a documentary, again, YouTube algorithm, um, called The Baldies. It's, um, a PBS program. I thought, hey, this is pretty interesting. It's, it's about a, it's about a bunch of skinheads who were, uh, fighting against other skinheads, or specifically Nazis. They're anti-racist, anti-Nazi. I only got maybe like a few minutes in, and it seems uh, PBS likes to censor stuff. And um, you know, and you got, I mean, you got, you got basically punks. You know, punks are pretty much you know have no filter. They're pretty you know they're rough. They're coarse. They don't hold back, which means they're gonna swear a lot. And like I said, I only I was only a few minutes in and already beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. I mean, a few too many beeps in there. So I wasn't gonna sit there and no, no hour long documentary having to listen to a bunch of beep, 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 you know. And again, I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not, you know, I'm against censorship. But I mean, part of that too is um, it makes your, it makes your video sound like ass. You know, all the beeps and all the censor stuff. So, I mean, I understand, you know, it's, it's their channel, or, I mean, it's their, it's, yeah, it's their channel, PBS, 
you know, their channel, their rules. You know, and, and, a, and I wouldn't ask a... I wouldn't ask a person to censor themselves. Hey, don't swear, please. You know, I mean, if that's... You know, if it's... I don't think it's... I don't think they would like to curse. Hell, now I think about it, I think even Eddie Murphy said that back in the 80s. On the Dick Cabot show. That, you know, Dick said to him, Why do you guys curse? Why do you, why do you guys curse a lot? And Eddie Murphy said the same thing. <laughs> it, isn't, it isn't that I like to curse, it's just it's how I talk. I'm sure the... Uh, the Baldies and a lot of punk people are like that too. They don't want to enjoy cursing. It's just, it's how they talk. So I wouldn't ask them to censor themselves. So the easy answer on that for PBS, don't have them on the program. But again, if you absolutely have to have, they, they, the, the short answer is just, just let them curse. You know, just don't censor them. Because, I mean, I mean, once again, I get it, you know, your channel, your rules. But, you know, it doesn't make your programming sound very good. When, it, you know, when, you know, when every beep, every beep, every beep, you know, you can't say a beep word without getting beep censored all the beep time, you know. It's just all, you know, constantly being censored. So, I ended up bailing on that program. Um, but uh, another... Mistake number one. So, let me fix it. All right, we got a problem. Yeah, we got some technical difficulties going right now. Hold on. Sorry about this. And something else I forgot to match at the start of the stream. What I'm using right now is very wonky. It's real, real buggy. This may not be the best quality. Like I said, it... Like I said, I had this set up a certain way. It was perfect, but... back and enjoy the music. Okay, anyway, um, so I watched, uh, I did, yesterday and today, I watched a bit, I watched a really cool as hell documentary about, uh, about Angry Video Game Nerd, and basically the whole, 
the whole Cinema Massacre, I, which I never knew about, I guess there was a backlash, um, things got real messy, a lot of controversy and stuff, um, it was by a YouTube channel, by, or her name's Lady Emily, which I, would, you know, again, again, I kind of liked it, so I went ahead and subbed to her channel, I also, um, I also, uh, went on our Patreon and be became a paid member, like, um, uh, I'm contributing five bucks every time she uh, releases a new video, but she's not a. She, I think she pretty much uh, releases videos at a snail's pace. So I don't. It ain't like she's gonna break my bank or anything. So. She's a quality over quantity person, but anyway. Um, but yeah, it just. So she's talking about this and basically how it's whole. His whole channel went to shit. Um, which I again I I'm more into like his early stuff, like his his actual angry video game nerd stuff. But yeah, at some point later on, he started branching out. Um, he uh he had a he uh he put out a movie which I hadn't seen it, but I don't want to see it. It it looked it was something that you should kind of like Star Trek. Like, I don't think they put a movie out until after the original Star Trek has run its course. Angry, or, Angry Video Game Nerd, I'll just say ABGN, fuck it. ABGN should have done the same thing. They shouldn't have put out a movie until after his whole career has ended. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a drink here. Um, but yeah, then he, um, he had another, he had another series going, um, like, uh, like, Cine Massacre rental reviews or something like that, him and a bunch of buddies, they get together and they start talking about various VHS movies, again, I, it wasn't him, I wasn't into it at all, uh, then, um, I didn't know about this, but he also got a band together, um, Rex Viper, they were doing, they were doing video game versions of like popular tunes or something like that. Like, Eye of the Tiger was a uh, their their version was about uh, Tiger Electronics. They had like the, those little little handheld games back in the 80s. They did a they did that. I'm like, no. It kind of reminded me of a uh, back in a uh, back in the 80s. Uh, they had arcade, you know. Back, you know, when arcades were a thing, they had songs like, like Donkey Kong, like Do the Donkey Kong. I never heard it, and I don't want to hear it. But and they had a, oh god, there was, I think Frogger. Frogger was another one that it was a, it was a video game song. I don't think I heard it. It just, ugh, I don't want to. Plus, they had the uh, cartoons back then. They had the Pac-Man cartoon. Uh, I tolerated it as a kid. I, you know, if I, these days, there's no way in hell I'd ever watch that shit again. Um, Qbert, Qbert was another 80s cartoon. Watched a few episodes of it. Didn't, didn't care for it. It just. You know, when they're trying to make video, you know, they're trying to make video games into shows. It doesn't really work. So, kind of going off on a tangent here. Sorry, but. So, I'm, you know, I'm thinking Rex Viper. Again, I haven't heard any of the music. I never even knew that, I never knew that he got a, never even knew that he actually got a band together. But, um, but apparently a Lady Emily did, and she didn't like it one bit, like, man was out of tune and all that it basically I took it as all passion no street smarts I mean they're you know they're not musicians you know they're 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 video game you know they're gamers they're content creators but they ain't musicians so so I'll definitely take uh, Emily's word on this no I ain't listening to them but but, um, I also started thinking, too, maybe to a lesser extent, um, 
You know, they're, maybe they kind of went the, maybe like in the midpoint of, you know, ABGN's career, they decided to pull a Taylor Swift and kind of went the pop route. So, you know, Metallica too. You know, because there was a point where I was listening, I was watching all of uh, ABGN's videos from like episode one all the way up until I'd say episode 150 and I just lost interest. I forgot what I was going to say. But anyway, um... But yeah, like I, like I said, it just... It, it almost looked like uh, ABGN went pop. You know, they were... They... They were trying to appeal to a more mainstream audience, that kind of thing. Um, you know, it, 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 it's okay to have... It's okay to have different interests. You know, try out different things. But the thing of it is... It's almost like he's not listening to his audience... He's still going on the on the path that he's going. You know, he isn't really sticking with what works. I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this. You know, if something isn't working, you know, you know, time to quit. And, you know, basically, I guess. Hang on. Oh, excuse me. I think I think what I'm trying to say is, uh, he. Basically, he took he took everything that made his channel great and fucked it up. Oh, and there's something else too. Um, I can't remember the name of the company, but Emily mentioned it, like Screen Gems or something like that. I can't remember, but uh, he basically brought in a bunch of people to help him out, like with the editing and the script writing and all that. He basically brought in a production company to help him out, and I think um. I think what it might have happened to is uh, he also got married and had a kid. So the priorities changed. So I think somewhere around here, around this time, he had to bring in a production company to help him out. But again, it kind of goes back to what I said a few minute, minute or two ago. He took everything that was great about his channel and fucked it up. But again, I think, um, I think becoming a family man was pretty much the turning point. Because now he's got other responsibilities, you know. He's, you know, he's... He's got a family to take care of. So, you know, now was probably the beginning of the end. So. Okay, and I do. Okay, and I, okay, and I definitely have to do a I definitely do have to be have to do it behind the scenes. Um, I'm gonna yeah, because I definitely want to show this. Okay, um, let me pull it down here. Okay, so one big thing. One big problem I had why that why you had that huge long interruption. Um and it's also something I think I complained about this in one of my other cast videos too, but um it's the the image slideshow. It's very wonky, it's very buggy. Well I have the same problem with the Cinemassacre slideshow that I had with the sellout one. I actually had it set up to I actually had hotkeys set up for it. Um, now, before, uh, before I started this cast, it would switch over from Taylor Swift to Metallica. No problem. Like I said, I had the hotkeys set up for it and everything. Um, and, uh, I deleted the, um, here, let me, let me go and clear that out. I'll go and, uh, I'll reopen the slideshow. All 
right, um, I'm hoping you guys can see this. So I went down here, add directory. Okay, so, yeah, that's about right. And no, I had that set. Okay, that's, I had it set to manual. So, which means I have to set, uh, I have to set hotkeys. Go to settings, but let me kill the, come on. Screwed up the order. Turn that Q. Cancel. Got to turn that off first. Come on. So, let's scroll down here. So, what I did is, um, Again, I'm hoping you guys can see this. So, next slide. Right. Previous slide. Left. Click apply. Okay, so now... Okay, so this is what I was trying to do. You know, mention this. Show Lady Emily. And then, when I get to it, uh, at... When... It, at the right time during the conversation I'm having, switch over to that. The problem was, is uh, when I did this, it wouldn't go right or left at all. So, but as I said before, this this kind of thing has happened from time to time. Like slideshows are very buggy. So, what I ended up having to do during that period of during that long interruption. I had to, I had to delete the slideshow and split it into two separate images. I had to add two separate uh, images in my source column in order to make it work. So yeah. And again, be, um, when I was testing this out before I started the cast, it worked fine. So now all of a sudden, it decided to up and not work for some reason. But otherwise, um, I'm just going to go ahead and call it good here. Um, but yeah, so thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that, even through um, even through all my screw-ups. So, And um, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow. So, But until then, though, thanks again for coming by, everybody, and see you all next time. Bye now.